Welcome to 21st Sports Recap and Reaction for the Indianapolis Colts at the Carolina Panthers in their Week 8 matchup played November 2nd, 2015. And what a crazy game it was. We're going to go over the scores and every possession, and we're going to go over the stats, and we're going to give our breakdown and analysis. So it was raining pretty good there in Carolina as the Panthers were looking to stay undefeated and the Colts, they were looking to keep first place in that AFC South. But in this game, to start things off, on the very first possession for the Colts and of this game, we would see a fumble as the rain took effect right away as there was a botched snap. They said, large part due to the rain. And so now Carolina would take over and they would be already in field goal range. And Graham Gano would hit a 39-yard field goal. And it would be 3 to nothing Panthers over the Colts. Less than two minutes into the game. Just a little bit over a minute in. So then, after getting three points off the fumble, now the Colts would get the ball back. And now an interception as Luck throws an interception is it ends up with Tillman coming up with it and again the rain having to do with it and the Panthers they would go 37 yards in 11 plays eating up five minutes a clock and it would result in a three-yard touchdown by Jonathan Stewart about midway through the first quarter and with the extra point by Gano it was now 10 to nothing Carolina over Indianapolis so that would be it for the first in terms of scoring but we would see both teams just trade in punts. As already, the Panthers had 10 points off of turnovers, but the Colts would punt on their next possession after six plays, and then the Panthers went three and out. The Colts would go three and out, and then the Panthers went three and out again, and then now into the second quarter, with about 10 and a half minutes left before halftime, the Colts would end up getting their first points of the game, is Adam Vinatieri hit a 47-yard field goal. And it was now 10-3 to with Carolina still in the lead by a touchdown. So then the Panthers would get the ball after the field goal, and they ended up fumbling the ball on this next possession. John Stewart with the fumble, Werner with the recovery. And so now the Colts would force the turnover. They would take over again. The rain, you know, having a large effect on this game, and now the Colts would turn a turnover into points as they would get another field goal, this time a 34-yard field goal by Vinia Terry with about seven minutes left before halftime. And it was a four-point game with the score Carolina 10, Indianapolis 6. So now after the field goal, Carolina gets the ball back, but three plays later, Cam Newton is intercepted by Davis. And so the Colts get the ball back, but they weren't able to get any points on the board off of the interception as they had done from the fumble where they got the field goal. Instead, they would end up punting after five plays. Carolina gets the ball back, and they would punt as well. And then the Colts would then end up bringing this game to halftime. And at halftime, it was 10-6. to So a low-scoring game. Both teams struggling to get much going on the offensive end. Lots of turnovers in the first half as both teams turned it over twice, a fumble and an interception for each team in the first half as the Panthers had their 10 points due to turnovers. And the Colts, they had the field goal, and then the second field goal was because of the fumble, but they weren't able to turn an interception into points on the next possession after that turnover. So... Now we'd go into the second half. Carolina get the ball first. They would end up punting after seven plays. And then the Colts punted after eight plays. And now the Panthers got the ball back. And they started driving into Indy territory. They got all the way down to the one. But then Cam Newton fumbles the ball on the one-yard line. Second and goal. Of course, once again, the rain being a major factor in this game now the Colts would take over after the fumble and they were on their own three yard line to start this possession and they would end up punting from their own four as they went three and out 
so they weren't able to turn that turnover into points and now the Panthers would end up with the ball after the punt on their own on the Indianapolis 29 and then on second and eight from the 27 Cam Newton hit Greg Olson as Olson made a great catch and it was a 27 yard touchdown with just about 15 seconds left in the third quarter and with the extra point by Gano it was now 17 to 6. So now the Colts would go three and out on their next possession. The Panthers would go three and out as well. And now the Colts with the ball with about 12 and a half minutes left in this game. They had it on their own 23 second and 10. And Andrew Luck is intercepted by Coleman. So now another interception for the Panthers as they pick off Luck for the second time in this game. And so now with the interception, they would take over on the Indy 30. And then they would end up with a second and t seven on the Indianapolis 8. And Cam Newton hit Corey Brown for the 8-yard touchdown pass. But then on the extra point, it was no good wide left. And so it would be 23-6. to six. But at this point, it looked like Carolina had this one pretty well in hand. Like this game was over, but not so fast. Even with the three turnovers, the fumble, and the two interceptions, Andrew Luck just doesn't give up. He just will always fight to the very end. And he drove the Colts 86 yards in eight plays, eating up about three, almost four minutes o'clock. And he capped it off with an 18-yard touchdown pass to Andre Johnson. With the extra point by Vinny Terry, it was now a 10-point game with the score Carolina 23 Indianapolis 13. So the Panthers would go three and out on their next possession as the Colts came up with a big stop. And so now Andrew Luck and the Colts would take over on their own 43 after the punt. And they would go 57 yards in eight plays in about two minutes. And he hit Colby Fleener for an eight yard touchdown pass. And with the extra point by Vignateri, it was all of a sudden a three point game with about two and a half minutes left to play. So now, 23 to 20, the Panthers holding on to the field goal lead, and they would get the ball on their own 20 after the touchback, but they would go three and out on the possession, and they would have to punt the ball from their own 27. So now the Colts would get the ball with just over two minutes left, trailing by three on their own 40. They'd bring the game to the two-minute warning, and they ended up faced with a fourth and ten from the 40. And on fourth and ten, Andrew Luck hits Griff Whalen, and Whalen catches it for a 12-yard reception. And so now it was a first down. And they ended up reviewing it, and it was a first down at the Carolina 48. So then, after an incomplete pass brought up second and ten, Luck hit Whalen again, this time for an 11-yard reception, and it was a first down at the Carolina 37. Luck spiked the ball, and now second and ten from the 37, Luck would scramble for six yards. That brought up third and four from the 31. Luck then hit Moncrief for a five-yard reception to bring the ball to the 26 for a first down. An incompletion would bring up second and ten, he then went back to Griff Whalen. He picked up seven yards, and it was now third and three in the red zone at the Carolina 19 with just 30 seconds left to play. Luck went then to Fleener. He picked up seven, and that was a first down at the Carolina 12. He spiked the ball, and now Luck would scramble for six yards to bring the ball to the six-yard line, and the Panthers took their last timeout. Of course, the Colts, no timeouts in this game. And now third and four from the six, an incomplete pass would bring up fourth down. Is There was only nine seconds, and the incomplete pass left two seconds on the clock. And on that play, that third and four, Keekly narrowly almost intercepted it, but he stopped it from being a touchdown as he broke up the pass. So a big play there by Keekly as he'd been making big plays all game long. But now with two seconds left, they brought out Adam Vinatieri, the Hall of Fame kicker, the future Hall of Fame kicker. And he kicked a 24-yard field goal. His time expired, and this game was going to overtime. 
So it was 23 to 6, and the Colts score 17 points in the final seven minutes of this game in the fourth quarter to tie it up. And we're headed to overtime. So it's a crazy finish at the end of the fourth quarter there, especially in the last two and a half minutes, putting up the 10 points. And the defense of the Colts comes up big. And the Panthers at that point, they were looking pretty winded. They looked like they were running out of gas. As it was a tough game. It was a mutter. As it was just raining hard throughout the game, and that makes it tough. It puts a lot more you know, uh, wear and tear on your muscles when you're out there playing in the mud. And so it was just a matter of the Colts just kept coming at them, kept coming at them as good as the Panthers were playing on defense. Luck just does not stop. And eventually they were able to get those points on the board and get into the end zone there. And then the field goal ties it. So now in overtime, to start things off, the Colts get the ball first. And so with the ball first, they started off on their own 45 as they got a 45-yard return on the opening kickoff of overtime. So then Luck would end up bringing them down, and they got to the 32, but that's where their drive stalled as Keekley was able to make the tackle at the 32 to stop it from being a first down. He tackled Fleener. And so now Vinatieri would come out to attempt a 50-yard field goal it was up, it was good, and now the Colts were up 26-23 to off of the first possession of overtime. Of course, with the rules in overtime, if you score a field goal, the other team gets a chance to tie it with the field goal and keep overtime going, or they could win it with a touchdown, which is basically the first touchdown in overtime wins it, as I'm sure you're familiar, but those of you who may not be. So now Carolina got the ball. After the kickoff, it was a touchback. And now they had to get a field goal to keep it going, or they could win it with a touchdown. And so then Cam Newton started driving them down the field. They had a second and nine from the 21. He hit Brown for a 23-yard pass to make it a first down on the 44. Then on second and 10 from the 44, he went to Greg Olson. He picked up 19 yards on the reception, and now it was a first down at the Indianapolis 37. So then Newton went to Ted Ginn, and Ted Ginn picked up 12 yards, and it was a first down at the Indianapolis 25. Stewart then got stopped for no gain on the first down, and then Cam Newton got tackled for two yards on the next play. So now it was 3rd and 8 at the Indianapolis 23, and an incomplete pass would bring up 4th down from the 23 as they brought out Graham Gano to attempt a 42-yard field goal. Of course, remember, he did miss that extra point, which made it where they were actually in overtime, because if he had made that extra point, the Colts couldn't have tied it on a field goal. They would have had to go for the touchdown. But he makes the 42-yarder, and this game would continue. So a huge clutch field goal there by Gano after Vinatieri had kicked a couple clutch field goals, one at the end of regulation and then another one to put the Panthers in that position. But now the Panthers matched them field goal for field goal. Now it was next score wins. So a field goal would win it at this point. Any score wins it. And the Colts get the ball after the kickoff. They had it on their own 29. Frank Gore picked up two yards on first down. Second and eight now from the 31. Andrew Luck drops back to pass. He's looking for Fleener, but Roman Harper is there. Roman Harper breaks up the pass. The ball goes flying in there. It hit him like in the helmet or something. And Keekly is there with a heads up play as Keekly is just an amazing defender. The guy's super clutch. He was making big plays all game. And right here, he comes up with the interception and gives the Panthers the ball. Is now Carolina would take over on the Indianapolis 39 needing just a field goal to win this game. They were only able to pick up four yards and they did that on third and ten when Newton went to Jericho Cotchery and actually it was five yards that he picked up to make it fourth and five at the 34 and so now Graham Gano would come out to attempt a 52 yard field goal and as I said he had missed an extra point attempt on the last touchdown that they had in the only touchdown they had in the fourth quarter 
and that for the Panthers when Cam Newton hit Corey Brown there with about 11 minutes left in the game he missed that extra point but here he was in overtime with a chance to win it and Graham Gano hits it from 52 yards the game winner in overtime 29 26 the Panthers win they're now 7 and 0 on this season we have four 7 and 0 teams now it's the first time that's ever happened in the NFL and what a way to do it is they were up looking in control 23-6 the Colts come back to tie it up and force overtime it looked like momentum was on their side it looked like the Panthers had run out of energy as they'd run out of stamina but no they come back in overtime to win this one with a pair of field goals by Graham Gano and Graham Gano is the hero in OT after missing that extra point of course you know the extra points are tough and any of these kicks were tough in this weather and that's what makes it even that much more spectacular that he hit that 52 yarder even the 50 yarder by Vinatieri as he kicked that one on the first possession but Gano hits that 42 yarder and then the 52 yarder and the Panthers win. And what a play by Keekley to intercept Luck for the third time. Harper made a big play on that one as well to break up that pass as he was Johnny on the spot. And Luke Keekley, the heads up play, he was amazing all game. The Panthers' defense was incredible in this one all around. They played a really good game. They were forcing the turnovers, four turnovers. They got three interceptions, and they forced Luck to fumble the ball as well. So Luck with four turnovers in this game. And the Carolina Panthers defense, like I said, they were coming out strong in this one. They only allowed six points through the first three quarters. But Luck, I mean, that guy just, you see him do this all the time where he gets behind, and it seems like he plays his best ball when his back is against the wall especially in the fourth quarter when they just start airing it out it's as if they're playing you know like the sandlot football and like backyard football and he just freaking finds a way to get in the end zone he, like he refuses to not get touchdowns in the game the guy's crazy it's as if he's a goldfish he forgets about the interceptions that he's been throwing and then he always makes that you know comeback attempt at the end but they they made it to overtime but Carolina gets it done, and they did it with their defense, as their defense is something special. Of course, Cam Newton had a really good game as well. It was a tough one, like I said, in that weather and that rain, and the field was all wet, and that's conditions they had to deal with even once the rain let up some. But in this game, Cam Newton, 16 for 35, 248 passing yards, two touchdowns, and an interception. He also had 10 carries for 41 yards. Andrew Luck, 23 for 47, 231 yards, two touchdowns, three interceptions. He also had six carries for 35 yards. As I said, he did have that fumble as well as he had four total turnovers in this game. And then John Stewart with uh, 24 carries for 82 yards on the ground. He had a touchdown rushing as well. He also had one reception for one yard. And Frank Gore was the leading rusher for the Colts with 22 carries for 70 yards. Gore also had three receptions for 22 yards, which gave him 92 total yards on the game. And for the receivers, the leading receiver in the game was Andre Johnson for the Colts with four receptions for 81 yards and a touchdown. And for the Panthers, Greg Olson, the tight end, had six receptions for 79 yards and a touchdown. And for the Panthers, Ted Ginn had two receptions and 60 yards. Corey Brown, three receptions for 42 yards and a touchdown. The fullback, Mike Tolbert, one reception for 40 yards. Cotchery, two receptions for 18 yards. And for the Colts, as I said, Johnson with the four receptions for 81 and a touchdown. Griff Whalen, five receptions, 48 yards. Colby Fleener, the tight end, seven receptions for 43 yards and a touchdown. <clears throat> Moncrief also had two receptions for 18 yards and T.Y. Hilton just one reception for 15 yards. And the kickers, Graham Gano, three for three on the field goals, two for three on the extra points. Adam Vinatieri, four for four on the field goals, two for two on the extra points. And then on defense, 
for the Panthers. Keekly coming up big. He had that interception in overtime. Coleman and Tillman each had interceptions during the regular time, during regulation. And Jared Allen had a sack, and so did Coney Ely. And he also, Ely had a forced fumble, and Lutalili had a forced fumble as well. And for the Colts, Robert Mathis had two sacks, and Davis had an interception. Cole had a forced fumble. We look at the first downs, 19 for Indianapolis, 17 for Carolina. On fourth down, the Colts were 6 for 18, 33% converted. They went for it once on fourth down. They did convert. On third down, the Panthers were 4 for 16, 25% converted, 2 for 2 on fourth down. Total net yards, 379 for the Panthers, 359 for the Colts. On the ground, 140 netted for Carolina, 136 for Indianapolis. Through the air, net passing yards, 239 for the Panthers. As Cam was sacked twice for a total of 9 yards lost. And for the Colts, 223 netted through the air. As Luck was sacked twice for a loss of 8 yards total. And we look at the penalties in this game. Not much on the penalty end. 6 penalties against the Panthers, 55 yards. 2 against the Colts, 15 yards. The Panthers fumbled twice, lost both. The Colts fumbled three times, lost one. That was that botched snap attempt. That technically was a fumble for uh, luck, although you could have called it on the center. But that was the thing. The ball was slippery because it was wet. Slippery went wet. So then uh, in the red zone, two for four for the Colts, 50%. And for the Panthers, they were 2 for 3, 66% in the red zone. The time of possession, 35 minutes and 58 seconds for Indianapolis, 33 minutes and 40 seconds for Carolina. Of course, they played the overtime as they went about uh, almost 10 minutes, about 9 and a half. What a crazy game it was. And, I mean, <laughs> we saw some pretty good defense, and then you saw just – the classic Andrew Luck with him scoring those points. But if Ken, also classic, the interceptions, that's something that has plagued him throughout his career is those turnovers. Of course, give a lot of credit to that Carolina defense as they were making some really good plays. They were putting the pressure on them. They made them look really bad through this game. I mean, they were dominating them. In the first three quarters of this game, it was just all Carolina. It had even into the fourth quarter at that point i mean it was just insane the way that they were just dominating luck he really didn't have anything going on and then all of a sudden in the final like 10 minutes of the game he just puts this together like just starts throwing like crazy and ties it up and said the panthers you know they played a long hard game at that point they were kind of looked winded and kind of wore out they said with that weather and those conditions and with the field being real muddy and loose, it makes it harder. It takes more out of you, and so you get more tired, you know. It zaps the strength out of you in those conditions, and that's where you saw the Colts make that comeback in the fourth. Of course, they're a very talented team, and that's even more credit to the Panthers, the way that they were keeping them in check for the first you know, uh, 50 minutes of this game in regulation. But the Panthers, they, you know, even though they let them come back and tie the game, once it got to overtime, they clamped down and they made the big plays when they needed to. They came up clutch. This Keekly especially is always coming up clutch throughout his career. The guy is super clutch. And just all around on the defense, I mean, they've got a lot of talent up and down that defensive, you know, the line the linebackers and in the secondary all throughout they have one heck of a defensive squad especially like so the way that they were keeping the Colts in check through the first three quarters was very impressive even with that fourth quarter comeback that made things dramatic but I mean until that happened it was just all Carolina it was just like I was like wow they're just dominating them a very strong performance but then the Colts you know you got to give them credit that they stuck in it. 
but in the end it was Carolina who's seven and zero now. But let me and they're the only seven and zero team left in the NFC, the number one team right now. They have the number one seed. As so we're now at the halfway point, if the season ended today. The Panthers would have home field advantage through the playoffs. But we'll see what happens in the second half of the season. It's going to be fun. It's been a fun first half of the season. But let me know what you think in the comments section below. Definitely interested to read your thoughts and opinions. Thank you very much for listening. It's greatly appreciated. I hope you're having a good day and had a great weekend. And have a great week and enjoy all the sports.